Good morning, friends in Christ. We are glad that you're joining us this morning for our Facebook Live devotions, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. as we are going through the book of Joshua. And so good morning. We're going to give some people some time to jump on here this morning. And uh, we're glad that you're joining us. As we're going through the book of Joshua this morning, we find ourselves in Joshua chapter 6. So go ahead and get out your Bible and turn to Joshua chapter 6. We're going to see in Joshua chapter 6 one of the major historical stories that we learn about all the way in Sunday school. And there was even a Veggie Tale movie about this miracle, Josh and the Big Wall. And so in Joshua chapter 6, we're going to see the walls of Jericho and how the walls are going to go crumbling, tumbling down because of the almighty power of the Lord as his nation of Israel is headed for the promised land. And first up, as they have crossed the Jordan, is the city of Jericho. And what makes Jericho so well known is that it is a fortified city around this 9 to 12 um, acre land is this huge wall that goes around it and it is protected and it is fortified and they think that they are safe in Jericho but they are worried and why are they worried they are worried because they have heard that God is on the move that the nation of Israel were able to cross the flood waters of the Jordan River and are now headed their way. And Israel has a history and a reputation with Moses and now with Joshua. And so the people in Jericho, they are scared, they're fearful, and they have locked the walls. Nobody gets out, nobody comes in. They are preparing themselves for battle. And their safety and security, they believe, is in this huge wall before the safety and security of the nation of Israel. It's not a wall. It's not in the things of this world. It is in their faith and trust in the one who created everything, the one that is the Almighty, the Lord. And so that kind of sets the stage for us here in Joshua chapter 6. Here we go. Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And so in the city of Jericho, they can see over those walls from towers, and they see the nation of Israel heading their way. And so they summon all the people, close the gates, nobody leaves the city, nobody comes into the city. We are preparing for battle. And so they have closed down the city of Jericho, and they are preparing for battle inside of those walls. And they know the nation of Israel, with its reputation, is headed its way. And so that's what the people are prepping for. They are prepping for war. And as they are prepping for war, we see what God is going to tell Joshua in verse 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. And so the king and the mighty men of valor there in Jericho, the army, they thought they were tough. They thought that they had protection with the big wall, and they thought that they were fine. But the rumors they have heard about the nation of Israel and God being on the move has them fearful. And in their fear and in their anxiety, they've closed everything down and they're prepping, but they are on the defensive as God is telling Joshua, see, the people in Jericho, its king, its leaders, its army, they're already terrified and afraid. They're already defeated before you even get there, before you even start this battle. The battle belongs to the Lord, and it's already won. Do you see that, Joshua? That's what the Lord sees, says to Joshua. You see the victory? The victory is already yours. They're already in your hands. Uh, they've already went down the mental road of defeat in the city of Jericho. And so he's letting Joshua see I've already given you the victory. Verse 3, You shall march around the city, all the men of war, 
going around the city once. Then you shall do this for six days. So for six days, one time a day, they're going to be a processional a parade of the nation of Israel following the Lord's command here to do this ritual, this ritual of walking all around the walls of Jericho, that 9 to 12 acre lot of land with this huge wall around it and the circumference of it, and they're going to walk around it six days, one time. This processional is going to happen. This ritual is going to let Joshua and the nation of Israel know that God is the one leading. He's the one fighting the battles. He's faithful. He's all-powerful. We just have to be faithful and do what He says. If we do what He says and obeys His command, He's going to give us the victory. And that's what rituals do. Rituals point us to Jesus. Now, we get in a problem with rituals when we put the power in the ritual itself instead of the power of God. But rituals in and of themselves are not a bad thing if you remember the importance of them and the importance of them is pointing us to God. And that is what this ritual is going to do. It's going to point the nation of Israel to God, knowing that God is the one doing the work, that we can't take any credit for this victory that God's going to give us in Jericho. He gets all the glory and the credit where we don't. God's the one doing the work. And so you're going to do that for six days. Now, here we see some instructions. Verse 4, seven priests shall hear shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. On the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And so seven priests, right, uh, they are carrying seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. The ark of the Lord, the ark of the covenant, is the presence of God. As God led them across the Jordan and the floodwaters, now He's leading them around the walls of Jericho. Six days you're going around once. Seventh day, with seven priests, seven horns, trumpets, you're going to go around seven times. And the number seven has theological significance for us throughout the Bible. God created everything in six days. On the seventh day, He rested. He made it the Sabbath. He blessed it. And the number of seven means God's completion, God's perfection. And so this ritual is going to be complete on day seven. And so we see this seven over and over and over. We're going to see seven. We're going to see three. We're going to see these biblical numbers, 10, 12. We're going to see these biblical numbers throughout Scripture. And that is pointing the people to the Lord also. And so seven times they're going to blow these trumpets. Verse 5, And when they make a long blast with a ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people will let out a shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat. So how's God going to take down this wall? With this ritual of them walking around six days, one time a day, seventh day, around seven times, blowing these seven ram's horns, these seven trumpets, and after they go around seven times doing this, the people, the nation of Israel, are going to let out a huge shout. And that's what's going to take down this wall. Now for military people, architects, engineers, this doesn't make any sense. How are you going to take down a huge wall of protection with a loud shout and a ritual of just walking around with these ram's horns and these trumpets blowing and then letting out a huge shout. It makes no sense. But miracles don't always make sense, but they point us to God who can do anything. And God is the one doing this because the ark of the Lord, the presence of God, is going around these walls. And it's the presence of God and His power that's going to take these walls down. And they're going to fall down flat. And the people shall go up, everyone straight before Him. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of the Lord, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Go forward, march around the city, and let the armed men pass on before the Ark 
of the Lord. And so Joshua is relaying to the people, this is what God told me to do. It may not make any sense, but it didn't make a lot of sense of us crossing the floodwaters of the Jordan either by standing in there with the Ark of the Covenant. And so we just have to be faithful. So just follow what God tells us to do. Don't do what you want to do. Just do what God tells us to do. And so these are the commands and the instructions. And if we're faithful and we follow them, it's going to give us victory. Verse 8, And just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets with the ark of the covenant of the Lord following them. The armed men <coughs> were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpets, and the rear guard was walking after the ark, while the trumpets blew continually. The parade, the processional around, the trumpet horns being blown. And for six days, they're going around once. Seventh day, they're going to go around seven times. But those first six days, they're going to be quiet after the processional around. The seventh day, after the seventh time, there's going to be a huge shout. And then the walls. And the words of John Cougar Mellencamp are going to come crumbling, tumbling down. They're going to fall flat. Verse 10, But Joshua commanded the people, You shall not shout or make your voice heard, neither shall any word go out of your mouth until the day, and that moment on the seventh day, that I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout with everything you got. So he caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city, going about it once. And they came into the camp, and spent the night in the camp. And so on that day one, they walk around, and they're told to be quiet, no words out of your mouth. Shh. I remember, right, as school starts this week, and we pray God's blessings upon our schools, safety, security, and for education to happen, for our children to grow. We pray for everybody involved, the principals, the teachers, the parents, the children, for every staff person that helps make these things possible and as we pray for the school year I remember right one of the first things they teach you is to line up and then after they line you up they tell you shh, shh, shh. and then you follow the person in front of you here is this processional this ritual that they got to be quiet for those six days as they mark around march around no one is to open their mouth until day seven and so they do what they're supposed to do on day one, and then they camp for the night. And what we're going to see is God carry out his faithfulness. And we're going to see the faithfulness of his people doing what he commands them to do, even when it doesn't make a lot of sense. We have to think, what do the people of Jericho think about this nation walking around with this processional, with seven priests bearing this ark of the Lord and blowing these trumpet rams? ram horns going around. What do they think? They have to look out and think, what are these people doing? But what the people are going to see in Jericho and throughout the world is that the power is in the Almighty God and the presence of God is in the Ark of the Covenant. And that's what the people are going to be fearful about. They're going to be fearful about Yahweh, the true God, the Lord of Israel, your Lord and my Lord. And so what do we do? We continue to put our faith and trust in Yahweh. And we continue to be faithful to Him because He's faithful to us. And His word and His promises are true. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we follow Joshua and the nation of Israel, as they're headed to a promised land, Lord, we see that they are on a journey. Each and every one of us, we're on a journey too, Lord, and we're following you to a promised land, a promised land not in our world, but a promised land in heaven, the new heaven and the new earth, Lord, that we know whether you call us home or you come back, whichever one happens first, we know that promised land awaits us. But until that day that we're in the promised land, Lord, you call us to be faithful, faithful to you, faithful to your word. We're thankful for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, his faithfulness, his sacrifice for us on the cross, that gives us this victory, that we live by your amazing grace. Lord, as we journey today and we go about our day, may we follow you completely. Help us 
to continue to hear you, to see you, and to realize you are on the move in our lives and in the people around us, and to be faithful what you call us to do each and every day by serving you, that we have the wonderful opportunity to be your hands and feet, Lord, and that when the walls come crumbling down, Lord, you are the one who is faithful, and you are the one who brings us hope and victory as you bring that hope and victory to each and every one of us, your people, your Israel. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends in Christ, have a blessed Monday as we follow Jesus. We'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. for our devotions as we continue to follow Joshua and continue to see what God is going to do with the walls of Jericho. Have a blessed day in His almighty name. Amen.